and welcome to the Carla Knits podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, crocheting, and always all of the yarny goodness that I love. Uh, today is Wednesday, September 28th. We're almost at the end of September. I can hardly believe October is right around the corner and hopefully those cooler fall temperatures. Uh, I am coming to you from Nebraska. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as CB Crafty Girl. And uh, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back each time. And if you're new to this channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, if you haven't already done so, I'd sure love it if you would give this uh, video a thumbs up. And if you'd subscribe to this channel, uh, that just gets it out to other people who might be interested in uh, the knitting or yarny, yarny content. Um, so I hope you all are doing well. Show notes for this episode will be linked in the down bar down below. Uh, we have a, what am I trying to say? <laughs> we have a group on Ravelry for this podcast. And we currently have a Love Your Stash Mal make along going on for the entirety of 2022. And um, I, let's see, it is just to use uh, things in your stash or... I guess, you know, I did open it to other crafts, but mostly it's it's been the yarny goodness. Um, so anything in your stash prior to the first of this year, uh, so you can make any project. And there's a chatter thread and a finished object thread. And when I checked the finished object thread yesterday or the day before, there's over 800 finished objects. So it's it's a lot of fun. It's really great to see you guys um, using your stash yarn and just to see all of the beautiful projects that you are making. Um, just a couple that I wanted to mention and I'll put some pictures in here, things that caught my eye. You know, I wish I could, I could tell everybody how much I love your stuff and I do love seeing all of the posts uh, and I do see them. Uh, but just a couple um, that I'd like to uh, just point out that were really cute, I thought. Um, the first one is by M. Joe, that's May, and she made this cute little peach hat. So I, I love baby hats and this one is just adorable. So a cute little peach hat. Um, let's see. And keeping with the baby theme, uh, I Now Hour on Ravelry and that's Kim. Uh, she made a baby dress. It's called the Tegan May. That's the pattern. Tegan May uh, by Tega or Tyga Hilliard. Uh, the ruffle. Oh, that ruffle on the bottom just caught my eye. That is so adorable. <laughs> so pink, so ruffly, so girly. Absolutely love that. And then the last one I wanted to point out uh, was a beautiful hat. This is by Rosa lbab on ravelry and that's rosie and this is a uh the pattern is the red house hat by carly oh i can't read my writing waterman i hope i got that right it's an erin weight hat and rosie used yarn that she had won uh absolutely beautiful textured hat um i I will, I have put that in my favorites on Ravelry. That is something that I would love to knit in the future. Just a lovely hat. So great job to all of you who are participating in that stash mail and it's not too late to join. We still have three months left in this year. So get in on the fun of using your stash or chatting about using your stash. Um, I will be drawing, let's see, on the next podcast, uh, since we're still in September, the next podcast in October, I will be drawing um, for this quarter that we're currently in. So something from the finished object thread and something from the chatter thread. So stay tuned to that on the next episode. All right. I am not wearing any knitwear today, um, but it is a beautiful day here in Nebraska. Uh, it is in the low 70s, so it is just delightful. Absolutely love this weather. And um, yeah, the temperatures are, 
they're they're coming down they're coming down <laughs> we did have a real hot spell last tuesday where um it reached uh, 103 in Lincoln, which were about 25 minutes from Lincoln. So uh, that was last Tuesday. Today is this Wednesday. And so we're in the lower 70s. So we're really enjoying this beautiful fall weather for us. So I, I sure hope it will, it will stay and continue like this. Um, so what I was saying, I don't have any um, knitwear that I'm wearing, but because we've had some cooler mornings, uh, I have been able to wear some of my um, short sleeve knit sweaters. And of course, that's just been delightful. I've absolutely loved that. But getting into some finished objects now, uh, the first finished object I have is a dishcloth. And it's the Three Pines dishcloth by the Kitchen Sink Shop. And I made, I made it bigger well, I guess, yeah, I made it bigger than the pattern specified. Uh, she uses a US 3, I went up to a US 6, and she had 12 repeats, which would have been, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That would have been at 12, right about where my finger is, uh, and I wanted to square it up more. So, um, so I just made some extra repeats till I you know, till it looked like what I wanted. Um, and I'm really happy with it. So it folds up, folds up nicely to put in, in a drawer, in the kitchen drawer. But uh, I haven't used any of my new dishcloths um, that I've made with the kitchen sink shop patterns this year. I've, I've kept them all in a tote. Um, but I think I will go ahead and use them at the start of next year, 2023. I will put them in my kitchen drawer to use. But for now, they just, they look really nice and fresh. Uh, the yarn that I use, this is really nice soft yarn. I've used this yarn for some other dishcloths. It is, let's see, Euro Baby Babe Soft Cotton Worsted, that's a mouthful, in the Baby Pea colorway. And it's an acrylic cotton blend, uh, but it works it works very nice as a dishcloth and it holds up really well. I have a pink one that I have been using for several months and it's one of my favorite dishcloths to use. So really like that yarn. If you haven't had a chance to work with it and want to try a different cotton, uh, that's a really good, good choice. So I am caught up for the year with uh, the kitchen sinks year long um, dishcloth. Uh, this was based on a book, a fictional book, so it's all books this year. Uh, I'm kind of anxious to see if she continues this club next year and what her, her theme will be. Uh, but this was September's cloth. So we'll see if when October comes around, I will uh, be good and get October's done in, in that month. So... <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for that. My other finished object is finally the baby sweater that I was, uh, that I've been talking about on the last several episodes. Uh, I had the length of the body done and then it was a matter of picking up the sleeves. Uh, so I was really close last time. I had one sleeve and a partial done. So now I have both sleeves. This is made out of, um, Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton, I think that's right, yes, in the denim colorway. Um, and did I say, I don't think I said what the pattern is. This is the DNA, DNA sweater by Yarn Madness. Um, and I have made this pattern before and I made it in an acrylic yarn, all acrylic yarn. It was before I was using Ravelry, so I cannot even remember, but it was kind of a light light tan colorway and an acrylic yarn. So this is a 100% mercerized cotton. And I like the body of the sweater, <coughs> but I've told a few a few people that I do not like the sleeves. I think they just turned out way too wide. Um, you know, and I did go down on the ribbing. Uh, the, the pattern does not have you go down on, like down a needle size, for the ribbing, but I did it and then I thought I don't like it. 
with you know just the standard needle that they call for so i did go down two night needle sizes which did cinch in the cuff just a little bit but i still feel like this part is too wide so i have decided this will go in my tub of gifts but i am probably not going to gift it to the recipient who i intended it to be for i was going to make two of these for my uh little twin nephews um but i'm just i'm just not excited about these sleeves so i really liked working with the yarn i liked the pattern obviously i liked the pattern because it was the second time that i made it but I just don't know that I like the two of those together. So um, if you have an opinion about this sweater, if you agree with me that the sleeves are too big, um, if you think they're just fine, you can let me know. Um, that would be great. But um, I really think I don't want to put time into a second one when I'm not really, really happy with those sleeve results. So that is my finished object and it will go it will go in the tub or you know for maybe somebody at some point we'll see <laughs> so those are my finished objects excuse me for today ah uh, whips mm. excuse me i do have a new whip uh where is it okay oops and i dropped it sorry about that so I, I already took out my Halloween bag. So this is by Three Goobers on Etsy. I haven't checked recently, so I don't know if she's still sewing bags, but I love that little quilted bag with all those cute little Halloween fabrics. Um, I was not going to cast on a sock until October when I cast on my Halloween yarn which I'm still planning to do and I will talk about a little later in my plans for October. But I got done with that dishcloth pretty quickly and then I realized, well, I really need a small project to take with me, like for car knitting. Um, you know, I don't really want to drag sweaters around <coughs> and one of my whips, my crochet blanket's getting pretty big, so I don't really want to take that. So I wanted to have something small and portable to take with me in the car when we're going places or when I go to work, you know, I occasionally have a break and want just to pull out to do something, you know, for a few minutes. So I did start a sock and this is a self-striping sock yarn, which I shared last time by the Freckled Whimsy. This is a DK yarn and it's a DK weight sock pattern. I'm using the Crazy Sock Ladies DK sock pattern. The yarn is called, let's see, uh, let's see, does it have a, oh, Experiment 24, 24 stripes. So there are 24 different stripes in here. I have not gotten, I am almost through all 24, almost. Um, and then it came with a coordinating mini, which is that pretty rosy pinky color there, which I did for the heel flap and gusset. Um, wanted to pull out Halloween, so I pulled out my Halloween stitch marker, that little, that cute little bat. Um, but DK weight socks go so fast. I don't feel like I've, I don't feel like I've sat down like big chunks of time to work on the sock. It's just been little, little bits here and there, maybe 25 minutes here, maybe 10 minutes here and there. And already it's really far along so <laughs> i love dk weight socks they knit up so fast and the colorway is just it's super fun just love all those different colors so um yeah so that that is the first sock not quite done with that but um i'm not in any hurry uh to get that one done that really was just so I could have something on the go, a nice, easy, portable project. But of course, it's always nice to have a sock on the needles. Um, I guess it's not too often that I don't have a sock on the needles. Um, my second work in progress, I'm just reaching over here a minute, is my pumpkin tweed blanket. This is a pattern by Krista Cagle. 
Uh, it, I have a Ravelry link and it is free on her blog or you can purchase a PDF uh, to have it without ads. I'm right in the middle of a row, the gray at the top, but that's okay. I have made a lot of progress on this blanket. So hopefully you can see where that stitch marker is. And I have done all of that. So part of the gray section, rust, gray, rust, gray, rust, and then in the gray section. So according to the pattern, I would, I would be done. And I would have been done, let me see, let me think about this. That, 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 that. I'm trying to think if it was after, it might have been after the gray section. Anyway, um, the, the blanket said the dimensions were 40 by 40, so definitely a lap blanket, but I want it to be longer. So I am just going ahead. I have plenty of yarn. I purchased plenty of yarn, not knowing exactly how big I would want to make it, but it's, it's a pretty decent size right now, and it's already definitely a good lap size, but I want to go longer. I don't know if I will completely double the pattern, but I'm gonna keep going for a little while. So uh, that's some really good progress, I feel, for the last couple of weeks. Um, it's getting easier to want to work on this as the weather turns you know, cooler at times. So in the evenings when the weather is cooler, it definitely makes me want to work on this. Now we just need some rain, like rainy, rainy, chilly days. And then I would really, really want to work, to work on this. Um, but yeah, I anticipate that this won't take too much longer. It's a really fun pattern. The yarn that I'm using is Lion Brand Fana's Choice in the gray marble and the rust color. So looking forward to having that done um, and having that for a fall blanket for our living room. On to two more whips. Uh, I didn't put up my table again. I just thought I would just keep things kind of beside me and because uh, <laughs> I've already I've already worked today and I thought I just want to come home and sit down and do the podcast and have fun just chatting. So <laughs> so I'm not quite as organized as usual, but that's okay. I still, you know, I wrote out my show notes and I've gathered my stuff. It's just not as nicely laid across the table, but hopefully y'all don't mind that. My Sandshore cardigan, I have made really good progress. I am super happy. If Hopefully you can see where that marker is. So I completed the body of the sweater, did the ribbing, and then I told you last time I wasn't sure if I was going to do the sleeves first or do the button band. But you can see I picked up and did the button band on the cardigan. And I tried it on. I really, really like how it looks. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited to have that part done. <laughs> and that was probably a smart choice because the button band is the least favorite part of a cardigan. Um for me, the knitting of that. Um, I guess if I was seaming a sweater, the seaming is definitely the least favorite, but on a sweater that where there's no seaming of pieces, the button band is definitely not fun, just picking up all of those stitches. But I think it turned out just fine. Uh, I said Sandshore, Alicia Plummer. The yarn that I am using is um, Michael's brand loops and thread. It's cream cotton in the light silver colorway. This yarn is so soft. If you have never worked with it, it's a cotton yarn and it is so, so soft. It is just like lightweight, buttery soft. For the sleeves, um, the pattern, the pattern has it to about three quarter sleeves, but I think I am going to go full length sleeves. Um, I just think I will like that much more if I do full length sleeves. So that is my plan. I wasn't sure if I had enough yarn to do two full length sleeves. So I did stop by Michael's and pick up um, another skein of yarn. 
uh, to work on the sleeves. So hopefully the sleeves will go pretty fast. You know, it's I'm working on a size 10 needle, so it should go it should go pretty fast um, with those sleeves. But I love that back texture. I think that is just so pretty. Yeah, so I'm really, really loving this, loving this sweater. Yeah, I think that's that's all I have to say for that. Really excited about the progress I've made. I'm actually really excited about all the progress that I've made um, in the two weeks on my projects. I feel I feel really good about where where I'm at. Of course, I'd like think some sweaters to be done because you know you want to cast on all the more sweaters. <laughs> But there's only so many hours in the day that you can knit and you know we have other responsibilities like jobs and you know groceries and laundry and all those things so my last work in progress is also a sweater and this is my salty air tea by Samantha Gurin and this is where I was at the last time so you can see I have done quite a good bit of stockinette on the body really loving how this looks oh yeah I just can't wait I want to have this done because this is something I could be wearing on one of these chilly mornings so I really do hope hope to get it done and by chilly I mean like you know 68 69 low 70s um and so that's that's still okay to wear a short sleeve sweater. Um, yeah, it does get a little warmer sometimes during the day, but um, for the most part, a short sleeve sweater is just great. So I really, really want to get this done, but I do, I do still have some length to put on the body. Not sure how much, but yeah, I can tell it's definitely not where I want it <laughs> to be. The yarn, once again, is by Knit Picks, and it is their uh, stroll hand-painted in the poppy field tonal colorway. <laughs> I think I said that right. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a great, a great golden color, and uh, I really, really love this pattern, so... Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say for that. I would say this is my most relaxing project. Um, I guess, yeah, the stockinette in the round, the button band, while it wasn't hard, I don't, I mean, and once, once the button band got picked up on the Sandshore cardigan, it was just, you know, the knit pearl and that was okay. Um, and the crochet project is fine too, but I guess I just feel the most at peace when I'm sitting down with this sweater and just knitting round and round and round and round on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been a real joy. This, this sweater is bringing me a lot of joy to work on. So, uh, I'm going to say, I hope to get both of those sweaters done by the end of October. So that's, I'm saying it here. I think it's totally doable. Unless, <laughs> unless I want to cast on all of the things, which of course there are things that I want to cast on. So we will go into a little bit of that. So things that I am thinking about knitting. Um, I don't think I took notes about this, but um, that's all right. Okay. Uh, so I did tell you, I'm just looking for my yarn over here. Yes. So when it, October 1st hits, which is a Saturday and it doesn't matter if I am still working on the other sock, that's okay. That one's going to kind of go on the back burner and I'm just going to have to be okay with that because on October 1st, I want to cast or close to October 1st, I want to cast on this Halloween self-striping yarn by Night Owl Fibers. It's the Spooky Fun 2022 colorway. And I think that's just going to be really fun to knit up. This is a DK weight, again. Um, yep, 75-25 blend. Um, it doesn't come with a coordinating mini, but that's okay. I thought about trying to find something for my stash, maybe holding fingering double. And I may still do that, or I may just use the self-striping 
as is even for the heel flap and gusset. I'm okay doing that, but I just think these colors are so super fun. Yes, and I did knit a pair of Halloween socks with um, Night Owl Fibers Rachel's yarn last year, and that was so much fun. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that that definitely is going to get cast on. 100% will get cast on. The other two things that I will share. Um, this is a cowl. It's a DK weight cowl called Sonatine. <coughs> Excuse me. It's by D. O'Keefe. I'm not really sure. Well, it was published this year. I don't know if I saw this. It may be one of something I saw on Instagram. Um, but I really loved it. Um, so I will or hopefully have inserted a picture here of this. So it's a DK weight cowl uh, done in two colors. And last year, so I'm considering using stash guys. <laughs> last year I purchased these two DK weight yarns um, from one of my local yarn stores in Lincoln. So I have these two colors of yarn to do this. I don't know if I have a bigger picture. Um, I'll just show this really quickly. There's there's the picture. So it looks like there's a garter garter section and then a lace section. So let me ask you this, and if you want to comment down below, I always welcome you know your thoughts, your opinions. Should I do this for the garter section and then this for the lace lace part? Um, the lace might get a little obscured with the, you know, the loud yarn, I guess the speckled yarn, or should I do the speckled yarn for the majority and then this for the lace? I don't know. I keep going back and forth. I think technically, let me just look at the yarn. Uh, yeah, I think technically I would have enough. If I made one this way, I could do the other one this way, reverse, I think, if I'm reading that correctly. So I could make two of them. I'm not going to make two of them. <laughs> but I do want to figure out which I want to do. Uh, is it more wearable if this is the predominant color with just a little pop for the lace? Or is this just kind of a fun, bold fall ac accessory with this as the main body and then this pop of color for the lace. So I should tell you what these yarns are. This is by uh, Lazy Bee Yarn. This is a Nebraska dyer. And again, these are both DK weights. Uh, it says hand dyed in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, this color is Tiger Lily. This just screamed fall to me. And then this color way let's see oh this is called garden party um but to me it looks so it just looks so autumnal with the pops of orange and yellow and some oh burgundy purples in there it just kind of reminds me of fall leaves or fall campfires so i think i think those two will be really fun together uh, and so i really would like to cast that on but again, do I cast it on and wait till my sweaters are done and then cast it on? Or do I just cast it on as another work in progress and try to put some time into that while I'm working on my sweaters? I don't know. I don't know. I go back and forth. I want to work on some fun fall things, but of course I really want my sweaters done too. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, yeah, like I said, I'm not really sure for sure when that will get cast on. The other thing that I am really wanting to cast on is a sweater. <laughs> this is the Arboreal sweater by Jennifer Steingass. Um, I just love the leaf color work on that yoke. And I have, um, I have this yarn, which I picked out. Uh, this is Barocco Vintage. This is a worsted. This is a DK weight pattern, 
but my tension, I am such a tight knitter. I felt like I could get away with, with this, um, worsted weight yarn. So I would use this for the main color and this for the, the leaf in the yoke. So of course I really want to cast this on and I want to cast it on now because it's, you know, it's getting to be fall and I'm just, you know, loving all the pumpkin-y stuff and just the fall colors, thinking about all the fall colors. But if I do that, then I know those other sweaters probably will go on the back burner, which I don't want to do. So what should I do? <laughs> should I finish my other two sweaters first? Probably. Yes. Um, and then I would feel really good about casting this on. So it still would be fun to cast on in November. Um, the thing is, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to love this color palette come December, January, when I'm most likely still going to be knitting on it. So would I be comfortable starting a sweater this fall and then continuing it next year at some point for the fall, like picking it up in the summer? For next fall. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever had a sweater on the needles that long. So we'll see. Not sure what I should do, but kind of anxious to cast that on. So that's that's kind of where my thoughts are in regards to um, my knitting, my whips, and what I want to cast on. So for sure, those socks are going to get cast on. That's 100% for sure there. Um, I just wanted to um, just briefly talk a little bit about the last episode where I um, I shared kind of what I felt like was my failure <laughs> at the, the Love Your Stash make-along. Um, I was really surprised by how much yarn I had taken in. Um, and to be honest, I was a little nervous about putting that video up just... Um, yeah, I was just a little nervous about that because it felt like I wasn't, I wasn't being successful at my own make along, but you guys were very, very kind and very encouraging to me. So I really, I really do appreciate that. And if you have used, you know, all of your stash or a lot of your stash this year, then I really applaud you for that. Um, I guess it's a process. I would like to, you know, continue to try to use my stash. Um, somebody suggested looking back at my projects that I've made this year and seeing how much I've used from stash. So I did do that. Um, this is probably not, you know, completely 100% accurate, but it's fairly accurate. Um, I looked on Ravelry at the projects that I've made in 2022. And it looks like I've done 42, 43 projects, I believe that was, um, yeah, 40, 42, 43 projects. And of those, 28 projects were made from stash or partial stash, which meant like 14 I bought yarn for. So I did use, I did use some of my stash this year and a majority of my projects were made using stash yarn. Um, just a couple that I will mention here, um, that City Limits sweater, the pink sweater that I made this year, um, used six skeins of yarn and I used five from Stash and had to purchase a sixth one to go with it, but five of six, that was pretty good. And then my Flutter Wrap, which was a shawl using slub yarn and mohair, uh, that used four skeins of yarn and I used three yarns from my stash for that and had to purchase one. So, you know, I guess that is still being successful if in your projects you can use some of your yarn from stash, even if you have to, you know, purchase yarn to, you know, to kind of make that project whole or, you know, to get cohesive colors. Um, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy that I have, that I have done that. So that's really good. That part I'm happy about. <laughs> um, I had asked if people were interested in continuing, you know, a using your stash make along in 2023. And it sounds like a lot of people still are. So I will continue it. Um, I don't know if I'll call it the same thing. 
Um, if you have an idea for a different name or if you just want Love Your Stash Mel 2023, of course, that's easy enough to do. Um, I might do a few tweaks to to the make along, um, but let me know um, if you have thoughts for a different name for it. Um, I'd also love thoughts if you have any other make alongs that, you know, something that you'd like to do or something you'd be interested in doing. You know, I always welcome those ideas, you know, too. I'd love to hear what you're interested in making. So thank you for your kindness after last episode. I really do appreciate it. Uh, just a little bit of chatter. I am sort of settling into um, a routine with all of my piano teaching. I'm really enjoying teaching the young children at the school down the street. Um, that's been a lot of fun. Very different from teaching the, the college students, um, but it's just super fun. So I, I feel very fortunate that I have this opportunity to do that. Um, we will be taking the boat out in a couple weeks. So we have been trying to get to the boat at least once a week. So we usually go on Friday nights after Jeff gets home from work. So that's been really nice taking picnic suppers to the boat and having a little sail. So we hope to do that this week too. Um, just trying to think we, Jenna had homecoming was it last weekend? I don't know. The weekends, the weeks are kind of blurring, blurring by, but homecoming was in there. Um, I'm going to see, go visit my son Ryan this week in Kearney, Nebraska, which is about an hour and 40, 45 minutes from here. So I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't seen him in a couple months. It feels like a couple months. So um, we're going to go out for breakfast that day. So that will be really fun. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot, sorry. <laughs> I am trying to get back into the sewing of project bags. I had, you know, I had made a bunch for Halloween and fall. And thank you so much for those of you who have been, um, you know, looking, um, favoriting them on Etsy. You know, if you purchased them, thank you so much. And for kind reviews, that means a great deal to me. And I really, really appreciate it. You know, if you like my post on Instagram, all of those things, you know, just mean the world to me. So thank you very, very much. So starting to sew some Christmas bags. Uh, so it was nice to get back into the sewing. I just started that again this week. Um, so I think, I think that's about it. So, um, I'm excited to see where my knitting takes me in the month of October. I'd love to hear what projects you're excited are you casting on new things for fall or are you dedicating yourself to finishing those those works in progress actually i will say one more thing about the sweaters my sweater whips works in progress um the nitty bitty sisters that is a sister podcast on youtube they are hosting a um finish your sweater make along and i don't know the exact hashtag on instagram and um so if you are working to finish some sweaters, I believe it goes through October 31st, uh, you should sure jump jump on over there and check them out on Instagram, Nitty Bitty Sisters, um, and participate in uh, finishing those sweater, sweater uh, whips. <laughs> so that would be a good thing for me to do, I know. <laughs> All right, so sorry, I kind of lost track of my thoughts. So tell me what you're what you're doing. Are you going to finish whips? Are you excited to start new things for fall? Um, of course, I don't want too many whips on the needles going into Advent knitting time. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I hope that you all are well. Um, I hope that you have found time to do what you love. And um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and um, comment down below. Join us in the Ravelry group. And uh, with that, I will say goodbye and I'll see you again in a couple weeks. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.